Hi guys and welcome to a Mike's Positively Technical video on this, the Works W876. Uh, it's a fridge. Actually, no, it's not a fridge. Theoretically, it's actually a freezer. Yep, you heard me right. Straight out. This is a freezer. Portable. It runs on 20 volt batteries. It can actually also run on 40 volt batteries, thus doubling the runtime. But it can actually just run on one single 12, uh, 20 volt battery. Uh, batteries go in this handy little compartment here. And uh, slot in. You get to the right way around. There you can see you get the voltage readout. I don't know if you can actually see that down here. But you get a voltage readout of each battery and the current temperature on the inside. Uh, this whole unit itself is 13.5 kilos and uh, it features wheels at the back and a handle on the top so you can actually drag it along to your festival of choice um, in style or wherever you're going to in your local hotel car park maybe um, it also comes with a USB port on the front and just in case you were wondering it also comes with a wonderful 12 or 24 volt in-car power supply lead. Uh, I think this is about a three meter long one. I haven't actually unwrapped it and tried it. And also this, which is a mains uh, adapter. So this will actually run uh, a between 100 and 240 volts. So this is probably a, a multi-use one. So obviously if you're in America, you put your 110 volt in there. In the UK, we put our 240 volt in there using the figure of eight style lead. And then there's a portable uh, power source or mains power source plug at the bottom here. Um, you can plug it in. And then rather cool. See, get it? <laughs> it's a fridge. I said cool. I thought I might get that one out of the way and done with. Um, you can see it's actually now charging up uh, the batteries. Uh, very, very cool function. I'm going to stop now, okay. But no, it's very, very uh, decent function on it. Uh, actually acts as a battery charger for your batteries as well as being a portable on-site fridge slash freezer. Uh, and I say fridge slash freezer because the fact that it can go down to minus 20 degrees mean you could actually use this as providing, obviously, you've got probably how uh, it's going to hamper the battery, I would have thought, by using it at minus 20 all the time constantly. Um, you can actually use this uh, as I said, going down to minus 20 degrees, which is absolute madness to have that setting and the availability. It has actually got a real compressor in here with a heat exchanger system. Um, this area down the bottom here is actually quite warm, uh, and it draws the cool air, obviously, uh, in, pumps the warm air out, and then heat exchanges it, however a refrigeration unit works. I don't actually know. never actually really bothered looking into it myself, but there you go. Um, Obviously, down here you've got a couple of buttons. You've got your power button, so you can turn it off and on. If you're running it on mains, you can turn it on, off and on. If you run it on battery, as soon as you turn it off, you actually need to reinsert the batteries. It's actually got a little warning label down here telling you. I don't quite know what the reason behind that is. Maybe it's something to do with starting the compressors. And then you can set your temperature to your desired amount. Just remember that in negative terms, positive is down rather than up can get a little bit confusing sometimes and there are also two modes that you can run it so I can run it at two degrees here it's sitting there minus nine at the moment so that should shut down the compressors right on cue love it uh, and then you can actually push this button here it makes a beep and then you can go between eco mode and max mode I, I believe max mode uses both batteries potentially simultaneously I'm not 100% sure um, it doesn't state anywhere in the literature and that is only my assumption uh, obviously, when it's down, you've got two cup holders here and here. When it's obviously the opposite, opposite way around. But at the moment here, you've got the fridge. And before we open it in a second, I just also want to cover. If you push and hold this button for three seconds, this L, M, and H uh, button flashes. And that's when it's on 12 volts, it will have a low voltage cutout. So if you've got a 12 volt battery in your car and you're not running the car, but you still want to use the auxiliary battery power to power this, you can set how low it is. A lot of modern cars do have a built-in um, feature whereby if you're using too much auxiliary power, it will reserve it so you don't flatten the battery. But if you don't have that feature on your vehicle, 
This has actually got it built in. It's an amazingly decent feature. And you can set that for the high, medium, or low, depending on how low you like to go with your battery. Um, I'd keep that on high if I was you, but it's a very nice feature. It also works as well on tw uh, 24 volt trucks. Uh, if you've got a big lorry or a juggernaut, or however you want to phrase it, depending on which country you're from, then that will work on that as well. Um, obviously you've got eco and max mode. And then that's that really. It also, as I said, has a USB port in the front there. So if you are camping, glamping, or just at a hotel room, you do have a USB functionality there as well. On the inside, you will find adequate room for at least two, possibly three, maybe even four bottles of champagne. Unfortunately, these are empty, which is a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a, uh, a downer, let's be honest, but you, you can have your Tati, or you can have your Moe Chandon. Um, these are actually bottles that me and my wife bought on anniversaries and various bits and pieces, and we keep the bottles and then have illuminated stoppers in them and put them up on display. But uh, in the inside here, you have approximately uh, one cubic feet. I think it's one cubic foot, so it's sort of a foot that way, a foot that way, and it's about a foot that way as well. Uh, that, those are approximations, they're not exact, I mean... I would assume that's approximately one cubic foot. I, I'm not 100% saying it's how exactly, but it's thereabouts. Um, by my reckoning, it's about cubic foot. And you also have a very cool function. You've got LED light strip across the front there. That really illuminates it quite nicely in the dark. Uh, probably you see, if I decide to use it, uh, the, uh, the thumbnail picture on here shows it quite nicely illuminated as well. Unfortunately, if you are gonna put your bottles of champagne here, you won't be able to store them upright because there isn't quite enough room. Bad thoughts there, to be honest, but I mean, nearly, just nearly. But nearly is not all the way, is it? I mean, oh. you could fit a very nicely a bottle of Bollinger in the middle there, and that'd be ping pong piddly. So yes, the answer is it's a very, very decent, and it's also extremely quick at getting down uh, temperature as well. Um, when I plugged this in originally, it's about 15 degrees here, ambient temperature in my uh, filming studio. It's a workshop. Let's be honest, let's not beat around the bush. It's a workshop. Um, and uh, yeah, it got it down to uh, zero degrees, about 15 minutes flat. It was remarkable, remarkable how quickly this goes. Uh, that said, it doesn't have a massive uh, detrimental effect on the batteries, in all fairness to it. Um, it's got that wonderful ability to be powerful enough that it's useful, but not so economical that it's useless. Uh, and also not so economical that also, uh, or non-economical rather, that it drains the battery down straight away. Uh, that said, um, it does come with a bit of a price when it comes to financially. Uh, this particular model without the batteries is £349.99 pence. I believe in America that translates to $349.99. If you have the version which has the 4 amp batteries, so they're the 4 amp Power Share Pro batteries, just like that. Magic one up from Finnair. Um, then you have two of those and the price comes in, uh, I believe, Four hundred and forty-nine pounds and ninety-nine pence, which is mirrors makes no difference. Four hundred and fifty pounds. It's quite a lot for a portable fridge. Having said that, it works very, very, very well. So um, you get what you pay for. It's horses of courses. If you go down to your local bargains basement sort of place and you buy one of those cool boxes, I've used one of those in the summertime. They really struggle. This isn't going to do that this is not going to struggle if you need it to go lower temperature you put it down lower temperature it can go down to minus 20 and i have no doubt that that in there when i had it uh, originally i got it down to about minus 14 15 so far and i've got no doubts that is minus 14 15 it's actually i've been using a uh, little temperature gauge a little laser one to actually tell how cool it is it says it's minus one at the moment in there and uh you got a low temperature there of minus 2.4, so that is quite accurate and it's quite truthful with its uh, measurements. Uh, Sound-wise as well, just in case you're thinking about taking it away camping and glamping, uh, it's very, very silent. In fact, actually, let's have a quick test. Let me get my decibelometer. It's called a sound level meter. 
and uh, let's turn it on so the compressors come on. Let's lay it down because it does actually have a bit of disparity between being on its back and on its front. So if it's on its front upright, if you like, like a fridge, uh, it does tend to be a little bit more noisy. It's got a bit more bass on it. Oh, that might be due to the surface that it's on, to be honest. But like this, I shall force it to turn on by asking it to go down to minus 10 degrees. Minus 12, that's fine. And then this little gadget here, I'm going to remain silent. And uh, less beforehand, let's just... Well, there it goes. It is now running, but... Um, I'm just going to turn it off. There we go, it is now in the off state. When it's in the off state, it also acts still as a charger. You can see there, it's still charging the top battery. Uh, there, 19.5 volts. It also gives voltage output as well, which is a nice touch as well. But, um, let's just hope that no fireworks go off in the background. I'm going to zero this. Put it on slow. I'm going to zero. just saying low because it's actually so silent that um, it's too low for it to pick up. So below 30 decibels, if I whisper, it's actually going to about 36, 38. Okay, now I'm going to turn, sorry, <laughs> what I'm whispering, um, I'm going to turn on the compressor and we're going to get another uh, figure of how silent this is when the compressor's running okay so it's going to be set to minus 12 you can't really see that but trust me that's the sound of the compressor kicking in and then i'm going to set it to max i'm going to shut up for two seconds and wave this around and see how loud it is okay Forty-one point seven decibels. Um, I think a library is something like fifty decibels. Put it in comparison for you. Um, it's really quiet. Um, like I said, I've got a, a chiller that uh, it sounds like a jet engine taking off. I think that sits about seventy-three decibels, which compared to forty-three, forty-three decibels is it's really, really, really silent. And that's also with your ear right next to it. If this was uh, on the floor in the porch of your tent, maybe, depending on you know, what, what your idea of a tent is. I know some people go camping in something which I probably couldn't even fit in lengthways. Um, other people have got quite large tents. Uh, some people have got stupid sized tents. People go camping who have got, they, they go with half their town. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, it depends. Um, yeah, I could definitely see you being able to get to sleep with this running in the background. No issues at all. Uh, it's very, very silent. And it also, nice little quality touch, just a bottle opener on the side. I mean, that's just, yeah. Cup holders. And I dare say, if you weren't quite as heavy as what I am, you could probably sit on it and use it as a perch install maybe as well. You can possibly put your, uh, refrigerated, um, fishing bait in there as well if you're a fishing person fisherman that's the one um then yeah you could do that or you could just put some cold beers in it and just enjoy some there uh, summertime at the barbecue in the garden without having the need to go inside to get over the fridge every two seconds there you go that is the works wx876 uh that's my little short video on it i do have a longer video on it as well it goes into a bit more detail regarding the temperatures and stuff like that and how noisy everything is from various different angles but i'll just leave it at that there guys thank you very much for watching and uh She's next.